Let me be upfront with all of you for a minute. I've had footage for another project recorded for over a month now. If there's one character trait I hate most about myself, it's my tendency to procrastinate, to put things off and put things off for days or weeks at a time, and for that, I am sorry. But this time, it's all Sea of Thieves' fault. If you had told me a few weeks ago that I would have four days worth of playtime in Sea of Thieves by the time mid-July rolled around, I wouldn't have believed you. I actually played the game a bit at launch, and at the time, I came away with the same conclusion as everyone else. There was a nice foundation, satisfying sailing mechanics, wonderful presentation, and absolutely nothing to do. It felt like an alpha you were expected to pay for, and if a game makes a first impression like that, I quickly bail and never return. The only reason I ended up reinstalling Sea of Thieves all these years later was because I was looking for things to play with my group, and that recent trailer for the Pirates of the Caribbean stuff reminded me it even existed. Even then, I expected to have one, maybe two decent sessions and move on to something else. Instead, I've logged on for at least a few hours every day searching for treasure, doing a tall tale, diving for shipwrecks, or trying and miserably failing to battle other players, all of which I'm mostly doing solo. It's taken over my life to such a degree that I'm making the short video you're watching now solely to justify the investment. Sea of Thieves has gotten much better at rewarding a player's time. At launch, there wasn't much to do other than dig up chests and kill skeletons. It got old fast, and even the most valuable treasure would give you paltry amounts of gold. It was a constant grind. You'd sail for hours and only get enough gold to buy, like, one hat. There's never been any power progression in Sea of Thieves. You're only ever working toward cosmetics, and when it took forever to get something basic, it just wasn't worth putting in the effort for more unique gear. Now, not only is there more variety across the board, including deliveries, new loot to find, multi-step treasure vaults, various world events, new enemies, and random dangers like skelly ships that can f**k right off, but there's an emissary system that's a real game-changer. By choosing to represent one of the trading companies as an emissary, you can earn big reward multipliers at the risk of becoming a more tempting target for other players. Also, if your ship sinks for any reason, your emissary progress is lost, and you have to start fresh. It's a great risk versus reward system that I highly recommend engaging with often. You can more than double the value of every piece of loot you sell, as long as you're not unlucky and running into vindictive pirates all the time. While I'm on the subject, the Sea of Thieves community is… interesting, but that pretty much sums up every community. It really depends where you look. In my experience, a lot of players kinda mind their own business, just doing their own thing, and almost all of them will immediately shoot at me if I get anywhere close. They're a very untrusting bunch, but it's a game about pirates, so fair enough. Other players, though, have what I can only call an insatiable bloodlust. It doesn't matter if I have anything to steal or show any aggression toward them whatsoever, these guys are so offended by my mere presence on their waters that they will chase me for 20, 30, 40 minutes straight. Nothing is being accomplished, no one is gaining anything, everyone's time is being wasted. I end up feeling like OJ in the Ford Bronco. It's honestly kind of a dick move on their part, because any questing is put on hold until they eventually get bored and decide to leave me alone. That said, it's important to remember that being a dick is not against the rules or an invalid way to play. Hell, even I've done a bit of treasure heisting and ship bombing. You can find any number of compilations on YouTube of players screaming at others, calling them griefers whenever they get sunk or have their loot stolen, but these people seem to be forgetting what the game they're playing is called. PvP is part of the experience. It's going to happen to you whether you like it or not, and as someone who's bad at fighting other players, I completely get the frustration. But that's just the way the cookie crumbles. The trick is to always be vigilant, always keep an eye out for others on the horizon, because if you can see them, they can see you and decide to sail over at any time. You learn pretty quick that you shouldn't get too attached to your boat or the cargo on it. The looming danger of other players is what adds this constant underlying tension to everything you do, and I don't think exploring or plundering would be half as engaging without it. Don't get the wrong idea, though, I've also had some very friendly interactions. 
Before I log off to make sure the supplies I've acquired don't go to waste, I've gotten into the habit of looking for another ship, pulling up next to them, and offering everything I have plus a free scuttle. Sure, they usually open fire at first, and some ignore my pleas of peace and try to sink me regardless, but more often, they happily take the opportunity to restock. I'm about to log off, so if you guys just want to board me uh, and take the cannonballs I have and the food and the wood planks, all that. Oh, seriously? Yeah, totally. Okay. Oh, wow, there's a lot. Okay. Yeah, those are just empty chests, but, you know, they're, you know, if you want to store I'll stuff. take all of them. And I've got like 150 cannonballs. Like, just go ahead. Take what you need. Seriously? That's a lot. Well, I'm going to log off anyway. Do you guys want to scuttle me just for funsies or? <laughs> that's up to you if you want to use the resources. No, that's good. I'll let you go. Okay. Have a, have, a, have a wonderful 4th of July. Enjoy the seas. Yeah, you too. You too. Apparently this is an unheard of practice, but not only does it make me feel all warm and fuzzy inside, it's so funny to hear the other crew's distrust transition into a unique mix of genuine confusion and gratefulness. Next time you log off, try it out yourself. As I said earlier, most of my playtime has been spent alone on a small sloop, but it's an undeniable fact that sailing with others is much more fun, so I did something remarkably out of character for myself. I joined the Sea of Thieves community discord and found random people to play with. Now if you know me at all, what I just said is crazy. I hate people. I always prefer sitting alone in a pile of my own filth, so let this be an example of how much I'm enjoying myself. The few groups I've been a part of have all been pleasant, enthusiastic to share what they've earned, answering questions, and giving advice. There's only been one exception to this. I was with a younger kid who thought he was hot shit, and then proceeded to place a chest of rage in the middle of 20 powder kegs while we were doing a Fort of Fortune. And if you're familiar with Sea of Thieves, you just facepalmed very hard. This mistake led to our ship sinking, then another crew showed up to murder us all in the confusion, and my entire group rage quit. However, I chose to stick around and chat with my killer. Turned out he was a Twitch streamer with 1,500 plus viewers by the name of Hitbo TC, and he invited me to join him for a while and go on some adventures, and his chat started calling me Uncle Craig, which was kinda weird, not gonna lie, but it was a lot of fun, and those kind of interactions are the ones you'll only get in a title like this. Cool guy, by the way. Cool community. Check him out for yourself if you're into that pirate life. One last thing I want to address is monetization, since I notoriously have a zero-tolerance policy when it comes to microtransactions in games you pay for. Sea of Thieves finds itself in a weird gray area, because while you can just buy it like you would any other game, it's also available on Game Pass, which is how I got it. Sure, you pay a subscription fee for Game Pass, but that's only 10 bucks a month for hundreds of games, so if you break down the math, I basically got Sea of Thieves for free. On top of that, the vast majority of cosmetics can only be earned through gameplay. You can't just throw money at the screen and unlock everything. The paid skins are unique to the storefront, and in my opinion, are priced reasonably. Two to three bucks for a full outfit is fair, five to six bucks for a pet isn't crazy. The only sets I'd say are overpriced are the ships, which can run for 20 to 30 bucks. That's half the price of a game, too much. Also, and it's silly I have to praise this, while there is a paid currency that you can buy in bundles, at the push of a button, you can just toggle to paying normal money for what you want. And that should be the standard. Just toss out the dumb paid currency altogether. And lastly, there's the Blunder Pass, aka the Battle Pass, which I usually find to be dirty words. So many other Battle Passes are designed to be a complete grind that go out of their way to make free players feel like they're missing out. Oh, you didn't pay for this season? Well, look at all this stuff you're not getting. Here's some breadcrumbs, you freeloading little shit. But it's exactly the opposite here. Not only can you reach max level in a reasonable amount of time playing casually, but very little is put behind the paywall. You earn tons of rewards, almost all of them actually, without spending a dime outside a few skins and some extra paid currency. So instead of feeling like you're missing out, you feel like you're getting a bonus for deciding to support Rare. And you cannot pay to skip levels. If every battle pass was like this, I don't think many people would complain about them. Okay, if you put a gun to my head and demanded I choose whether or not I like microtransactions in here, I'd still have to lean toward no, 
but I'm not pounding my fist over it either, if that makes sense. I've been having a great time living out my pirate fantasies in Sea of Thieves, and I haven't even touched the Jack Sparrow stuff yet. It's nice to see in the years preceding it that Rare managed to turn the game's underwhelming launch around, though I'll always maintain that it shouldn't have launched in that state to begin with. Don't release a game if it isn't ready, actually finish it first before you ask for money, please. That said, though, Sea of Thieves is good now, and absolutely worth checking out. It's not for everyone, some will get bored of it quickly or won't enjoy having their pleasure cruise interrupted by cannonball barrages, but if you're anything like me, you'll find it charming, unique, and consistently rewarding. And while certainly better with friends or a talkative group, it can absolutely be enjoyed as a solo player. Maybe I'll stop playing it long enough to actually continue the video I planned in the first place. Thank you for listening to my ramblings, and if you decide to give the game a shot yourself, let me know how it goes in the comments. Although, a uh, small favor, if any of you see my dog out there, could you let me know? I, uh, kinda... lost him.